What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com bringing on the bacon MLB DFS video for Monday, June 5th. Fantastic Sunday, guys. Huge shout out to everyone who tuned in to the yesterday's video. Uh, 700 plus views, all those likes. Again, if, if you're new to the channel, any video that uh, gets at least 50 likes, your name's going to be thrown into random.org if you leave a comment on the video. 50 likes equals one random person will win a free week of MLB content. 100 likes equals one person, run random person will win a free month. And 200 likes on a video, one random person will win a uh, MLB season pass through this entire season. So uh, big shout out to everyone who tuned in yesterday, left comments. I looked back. I didn't see anyone win the home run contest. That's another way to win an MLB um uh, week pass be a subscriber like the video and tell me who's gonna hit a home run what inning they're gonna hit it in and the distance travel just do one one batter per person per day the distance traveled is just a tiebreaker but big shout out to every single one of you that have tuned in lately that have said we've helped you out it's awesome um, I'm reading the feedback I see you guys want a um, a discord channel which if you are a subscriber to the website fantasyteamadvisors.com right now ten dollars a month um after the uh, all-star break it will go to 25 dollars a month because we will start putting out nfl content as well um anyone who subscribes i am built i'm going to build out a discord channel and we will put you in there uh get you linked up for that uh, we'll get that going um this season but we will definitely get it ready to go for football 100 percent. so big shout out to everyone um i i one of our subscribers here on youtube won fifty thousand on i think friday night which is amazing um big shout out to you if you want to throw me a few bones uh i've got the uh cash app link down in the description of this video i'm kidding but that is awesome congratulations i actually spend a ton of time on these videos sometimes i spend so much on the video and website that i don't even put lineups out for the day which is crazy um, today I did and had a pretty good day for Sunday, even though I was super busy. Um, but yeah, we're here for Monday and we have all, all of you that left a comment in yesterday's video and the 79, 71 or 79 likes it has, you're right here. We're going to randomize this three times. Then that is the winner of the free week. So good luck to everybody. Randomize one, two, and the winner is Wolf Warner. Congratulations, Wolf. Uh, comment on this video, like like it, and uh, then hit us up on Twitter at advisors underscore team. We will. Uh, you can either do that, or if you don't want to be private, you can just put down on this video what username and uh, email address you would like on the site. If you don't want that information out, just hit us up on Twitter at advisors underscore team. So that being said, I honestly, guys, I don't like this slate. Um, we're going to break it down. We're going to look at it. This game's not on. If you have to play the all-day slate to play this game, I don't know why it's at this time, uh, 4 Eastern, when the main slate actually starts at 5.40 Eastern. So we're starting about 30 minutes earlier than normal, what we're used to. Um, but, yeah, so you've got this game, and then we'll break down everything else. Um, honestly, this just I've already kind of scanned and skimmed the pitching on this slate feels like a tournament day only um feels like a day you might want to take off i know you guys won't because we're all degenerates let's let's face it so we're gonna play this i don't like very many in cash i think all of these are going to be tournament options and if you don't know what we do here if you are new to the channel we're going to look through every single game we're going to break those games down we're going to look at the pitching how they've fared between um the team that they've if, if hopefully they faced him before if not we'll look at that we'll look at how they've done so far this year and uh we'll go through some bats if you like and we have a ton of free information fantasyteamadvisors.com mlb tab bvp stolen base targets um you got betting odds ballpark ratings optimal stacks uh kind of just a, what to look for and then the rest of this are all premium content fta plus So the first game we're going to look at, Red Sox facing Tampa Bay. This is in Boston. I wish this game were in St. Pete, but it's not. But we will look at this. So the numbers were here. Um, we know that with Fenway, the runs 
Runs are a plenty in this ballpark. You can, let's see. You can kind of just see just with our ballpark ratings or ratings. So looking at this, um, these are all this, all these. Anything that we show you is going to be from yesterday. But you can see um, if we sort it by, and you guys can sort it too. You can go through here. So Fenway Park has given up 354 runs so far. They rank number two on the season. Um, not really sure who ranks number one at the moment, but looking at this, you can see we're, we're back. So uh, they're facing the Rays again here. We're going to be looking at that. There's, there should be some runs, possibility. But in this game, we've got McClanahan versus Brian Bello. We've got 73 plate appearances, 265 batting average, striking out 24.7% of those batters is Shane McClanahan. On the flip side of that, Brian Bello. 29 plate appearances, 333 batting average, 17.2 K percentage. Now, this game isn't on the main slate. You have to play, you have to play the all-day slate, at least on FanDuel anyway. This is where I like McClanahan, but at the same time, it's really hard to want to look at this because the game, anything can happen. Any either of these teams can hit, obviously. Uh, the Red Sox are a little bit more iffy. Um, if I'm taking a pitcher, I'm probably taking McClan in here. But I'm not going to be playing this. I'm going to be playing the main slate only, which consists of not this game. So if you want to play, like, maybe you play a single game, you could look at this. But none of the bats, they're like, so we'll look. So let's just see what bats against McClan and have had success in the past. Devers is 7 for 19, one double, one home run. Verdugo, 4 for 11 with a double. Rob, Rob Ruff Snyder, if he's even in, two for ten with a double there. Other than that, no one really jumps out. And then if you go on the flip side of that, uh, the Rays bats against Bello, not very many, only twenty nine. But uh, Rosarena one for four with a double. Uh, Yandy Diaz three for four with two doubles. I have a I have a very strong hatred for Yandy Diaz. I had him in um, on Drafters dot com. Uh, I had him in a. I did ten picks. I did 10 uh, prop picks, and Yandi couldn't get me a... No, no. I had him on FanDuel Sportsbook. He couldn't even get me a hit. I just needed one hit out of Yandi for uh, 250 bucks. Couldn't do it for me. So now he'll probably go off because I hate him. Uh, Josh Lowe, two for five with a double. We've used... When we've stacked the Reds, uh, the Tampa Bay Rays, we've done a Rosa Reina, Yandi, Lowe. Um, depending, Taylor Walls-ish sometimes... And Wander Franco as well. So I'm not saying I'm going to stack either of this, but if I'm looking at here, I'm probably going to be more inclined to look at the Ray, the Rays bats a little bit more. But if you are playing a single game, you're going to have to have some Red Sox bats. So we kind of went over that. So Devers would probably be my MVP or captain spot, depending on what site you're on. Next game, Tigers at the Phillies. You've got Joey Wentz versus Aaron Nola. Like I usually say, a pitcher that's never faced him before, I kind of like. In this sense, I, I don't. Um, just looking at Wentz against Philly, we, we've we been stacking Philly lately, and it's really worked out for us. Um, coming off an okay start against Texas, 4.1 innings, gave a one earned run, five strikeouts, but then his start against Chicago, four innings, nine fantasy points, gave up five earned runs. Again, the start before that against Washington gave up six earned runs. Start before that against Seattle, um, three strikeouts but three earned runs. So he's been very, very not a feasible starter. So I'm completely against going with Wentz. I would look at Phillies. If you want to get crazy because it is one of those weird, stupid, kind of bad slates overall, you could look at Wentz and just pray like tournament um, because his ownership should be very low. I did see a comment about ownership. Uh, percentages and stuff. The problem with that is I put these videos out either very early in the morning or the night before, and there are no ownership percentages. The ownership percentages would have to be part of our cheat sheet or have to be part of our content on the website. Um, that's the only problem I'm seeing because there's no way to get ownership percentages until basically the afternoon when some data starts to roll around and we can project models of how they've been in the past uh, then, you know, news coming out. So that is the problem with not being able to have the actual percentages. 
Um, so bear with me with that. I, I'll kind of think about that. We'll be able to do the percentages with NFL. Um, we have a full week to prepare. We know what's going to kind of happen. The game scripts come out, and we kind of know how to build through that. So that's my thought process on that. So bear with me until that is um, in mind. But I will figure out some way to do that for anyone who is a subscriber on the website just because it's really hard to do it in these videos. On the flip side of that, Aaron Nola, 32 plate appearances, which is kind of crazy that Nola hasn't faced very many. Um, but Aaron Nola against against Detroit, we're looking at um, 32 plate appearances, 207 batting average, 21.9K percentage. Looking at Nola's numbers, it's crazy to think at the beginning of the year, if you told me at this part of the season he'd be 4-4 four and four with a 4-7 ERA, I would probably say you're high. A um, couple of couple of stinkers um his last two starts against the Mets gave up four earned runs which we stacked against him and I believe those earned runs came from all the players we took and against Atlanta his start before that I said take a an Atlanta stack and he gave up five earned runs um time before that against the Cubs 10 strikeouts two earned runs 55 fantasy points it's been very weird uh year for him so far but I do like him here against Detroit so I'd be looking at NOLA um, against Detroit, and then I'd be looking mostly um, a stack, a Philly stack of some sort. So just uh, like yesterday, we had Schwarber. I told you in yesterday's video, if you watched it, had a good feeling about Schwarber. He hit two bombs. Uh, we had uh, the stack. Castellanos didn't – I mean, you'd think Castellanos went three for five, but no bomb. Um, and just kind of looking at that. That's kind of our thought process. So those are the kind of same ones. I'm still looking at Schwarber here. Love Schwarber against the lefty. I don't really care. Lefty, righty. Usually we like to go opposites, but Schwarber can hit Schwarber bombs anytime against anybody at any given moment. Um, and then we kind of look at other bats. So we could be looking at Castellanos against the lefty. I do like uh, just depending on what lineup's out there. Um, Bryson Stott's a lefty on lefty, but I'm okay with that. So just kind of looking at a Philly stack we kind of got to wait for the batter trends to come out we kind of got to wait for um just overall lineups to come out to kind of know what we're looking at but definitely a, a Philly stack against Joey Wentz I don't mind next game the Royals at the Marlins you got Carlos Hernandez versus Braxton Garrett Hernandez eight plate appearance 250 batting average not much going on in this game ba Braxton Garrett's never faced them before I'll take a flyer on Garrett probably I would like if this game were in Kansas City um, but Garrett's actually the the second highest priced pitcher on FanDuel right now at nine thousand. Um, coming off a pretty good game against San Diego, five point one innings, seven strikeouts, one earned run. Um, time before that against Col at Colorado, gave up two oh, five innings, two earned runs, which isn't bad in Colorado. And then start before that against San Francisco, six point one innings, eight strikeouts, forty seven fantasy points. Against Cincinnati, eight strikeouts. Arizona, six strikeouts. Did have a stinker against Atlanta. Gave up 14 hits, 11 earned runs in 4.1 innings. They just absolutely refused to pull him. Skip Schumacher, you gotta, you gotta pull him out of that. 11 earned runs is nuts. Um, so yeah, I like Braxton Garrett, especially against Kansas City. Would like this game a little bit more if it was in Kansas City because that's more of a pitcher's park. But we'll take what we can get there. It, no bats right now jump out at me at this game either. Uh, athletics at the Pirates, you got J.P. Sears versus Johan Oviedo. Oviedo is actually the fourth highest priced pitcher. I think it's probably because he's going against uh, it's going against Oakland. It isn't in Oakland, though, so anything can happen. Uh, Oviedo, 3-4 and four record, 4-5 four, ERA, 53 strikeouts. Uh, he's had a couple of – he's had one, two, three, four good games overall. Um, his last start, 4.1 innings at San Francisco, five strikeouts, one earned run. Only 25 fantasy points, though. Um, time before that against Texas, 5.2 innings, three earned runs, 23 fantasy points. Against Arizona, which is a really good team this year, six innings, seven strikeouts, 46 fantasy points. His other good games came back on 419 at Colorado, six innings, six strikeouts, one earned run. At St. Louis, seven innings, 10 strikeouts, 52 fantasy points. Versus the White Sox uh, back on April 9th, you've got seven innings, or 6.2 innings, 5 strikeouts, and 45 fantasy points. So he's been okay. And since this is Oakland um, and we are probably just basically playing um, tournaments, I don't mind either of these pitchers. 
Sears has only faced eight plate appearances there, given up a 375 batting average, which, which is nothing um, in those. Um, he's been okay. His most strikeouts, his last two starts, he has two strikeouts and one strikeout. The start against Houston, he somehow got seven strikeouts, got a quality start, only two earned runs. So I honestly don't mind either of these pitchers. Again, it's a tournament-only day for me. I'm looking at both of these pitchers, not really looking at the bats at the moment. That could change. But, again, I can't reiterate enough that this, this I don't like this slate very much. Uh, next game, Astros at the Blue Jays, Brandon Belak versus Alec Manoa. Uh, Belak is actually the fifth highest-priced pitcher, which is crazy. Um, Manoa's... I didn't realize this. Brandon Bielak's 2-2 two two with a 3.19 ERA. Alec Manoa's 1-6 with 5.46 ERA. Uh, honestly, it just depends on how deep Bielak's going to go into the game. 5.2 innings against Minnesota's last start. We did use him last week. What was that, Monday? We used him last... Let's see. No, we used him on Tuesday. Uh, we used him on Tuesday, and we, we had success. 5.2 innings, 6 strikeouts, 1 earned run, got the W, 38 fantasy points. Um, he's had up and downs. I know this is Toronto, though, so they are a good team when they're hitting. That's my only problem. But again, only tournaments, I'll have it. I'll have some exposure. And then Manoa, on the other hand, 22 plate appearances, a 190 batting average, but it's against Houston, and he is... <laughs> Alec Manoa is actually priced less than Julio Tehran, which is crazy. Uh, so Manoa looking against him here, um, been very bad this year overall. I mean, 12 in four innings, three innings, 5.2 innings, four innings, um, getting lit up, not striking out a ton. Um, he's had more worst games than he's had good games this year. And, I mean, he went 4.1 innings, 13 fantasy points against a Detroit team early in the season. Um, then against the Yankees, seven innings, five strikeouts, 40 fantasy points. Then he faced the Yankees again um, about a month later. He went four innings, five earned runs, six fantasy points. He's honestly had single-digit – he's had more single-digit fantasy point outages um, that I've actually known. So, yeah. Uh, just the way he's been pitching hasn't been good. I would be looking at Belak here. Um, tournament, again, obviously. And then I'd be looking at a stack. Uh, just depending who's out there. Um, looking at this, Jose Abreu, one for seven. Bregman, one for three with a home run. He's heating up. Jordan wouldn't be surprised if he goes yard today. Jordan, Kyle Tucker, Jeremy Pena. Yeah, I'd definitely be looking at an Astro stack against Manoa and looking at Belak for my pitching. Then we got Brewers at the Reds. You got Julio Tehran versus Andrew Abbott. Tehran, 11 plate appearances, 200 batting average against him. He is getting a good plus matchup against Cincinnati. It's at Cincinnati. And if we look, um, Great American Ballpark or Great American Small Park, giving up 311 runs and giving up 70 home runs. So if we sort this by home runs, they're down here. Uh, and the, obviously these numbers are not indicative of how Sunday's games went. So put that in mind um, but looking at that that's kind of where I'm looking I see that we've kind of got a thought of this ballpark gives up home runs it gives up runs but Tehran's been okay he is 7600 six innings against Toronto didn't give up an earned run against them 28 fantasy points against San Francisco his first start after getting DFA'd then signing a minor league deal then getting called up five innings five strikeouts one earned run 27 fantasy points so I will take a flyer on him. Just because Cincinnati is Cincinnati, um, I am a little bit scared or however you want to say it because it is Great American Small Park. But I'll have some exposure here because we're get, we got to get crazy on a day like this. And then St. Louis Cardinals at the Rangers. got Adam Wainwright versus Martin, Martin Perez. Wayno, 32 plate appearances, 170 bat, 172 batting average, 28.1K percentage. Um, he comes in 2-1 record but a 6-1-5 ERA. His ERA is up there. Um, gave up three earned runs against Kansas City. His last start only got 24 fantasy points. Wouldn't be enough at his price tag. Against Cincinnati, we thought he'd have a good game. I'll admit, I put him out there. 5.2 innings, eight hits, five earned runs, only two strikeouts. Um, 
He's just not looked good. And I mean, if you've seen Texas and you've if you've watched our last two videos, I was all over the Rangers um, all weekend. They're just hit, ridiculously hitting well this year. Uh, and lately, and like I said yesterday, I wanted Evaldi. I wanted the Rangers as a stack. Evaldi got the dub, 8-2 and two record, 2-2-4 two, two, ERA. Rangers put up 12 runs. So the Rangers put up 28 runs in two games, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I would not be surprised if they put another double digit up against Wayno or and or Wayno and the bullpen. So I'm not looking at Wayne right here at all. I'd look at Martin Perez, 21 plate appearances. I mean, they do hit lefties well. If you are taking a pitcher, Martin Perez might not be the most sexiest one that you could take today. Uh, again, not very good uh, slate. But, I mean, if we are taking the Rangers bats, I'm taking Corey Seager, who had another home run yesterday, taking Simeon, taking Josh Jung, um, depending on what lineup's out there, Adolis Garcia, uh, who else? There, there's so many other. Nate Lowe. Nate Lowe is on there as well. He will. They, those will always be in or around the stacks that I'll look at when I'm stacking the Rangers. If you want to go a little bit crazy, you want to go the Cardinals bats, Arenado, Goldie, Wilson Contreras was out yesterday. I don't think he's hurt. On, I think it was just, like I said, a day of rest on Sunday. And and the they lost 2-1. to one. Um, Arenado, 1-7, for seven, but that one hits a home run. Goldie, 1-5, for five, but he's almost matchup proof. Wilson Contreras got a day of rest, so he can come back in there. Oscar Mercado's 1-2. for two. We got Tommy Edmond. Um, I don't mind stacking this game, to be honest with you. I'm very curious when the Vegas numbers come out, what we'll be looking at, what the over-under implied run totals for both of these teams are. Probably top four, I would I would bet. Um, but, yeah, so I definitely like a Rangers stack. Rangers probably – Rangers might have the, the highest implied run total for a team whenever those numbers do come out. So that's my thought on this game. Probably not looking at Wayno at all. Um, I'll have a little bit of exposure to Perez, but I, I like the bats more in this one overall. And I have had some questions. People have asked why some of my videos have uh, a camera and some don't. Uh, I have a MacBook, a very old one, um, that the, the, the camera still works, so I'm able to use that sometimes. But I've got a desktop here that is I built on my own back in 2011, and it's crapping out on me. So that's what I'm doing. Anytime you guys watch these videos, you hit that like button. Um, you watch the ads, you send a donation on our cash app down below, you go to the website and you subscribe to FTA plus all of that money. I put back into the website. I put back into the, the hardware. I'm trying to get a new computer built. Um, very hard to do right now. Uh, the prices are coming down, but yeah, any, any help you guys give by watching the videos, liking the videos, subscribing, anything definitely does help so if you guys do watch our videos and you can hit those ads that does definitely help or there's other ways to help as well so it, i want to get a new uh, computer that's built through there hopefully to be able to give you guys a really good content and we're well on our way that's just why i don't have a camera up right now so i, I had a couple of people dm me which i thought was funny so i wanted to let that known before we uh, get through here so the final game on the day, the Cubs at the Padres. Kyle Hendricks versus Blake Snell. Kyle Hendricks, 126 plate appearances, 221 batting average, 22.2K uh, percentage. It's really hard to trust him. <clears throat> He's made two starts off the IL. Uh, one start against the Mets, 4.1 innings, three earned runs, five strikeouts, only 19 fantasy points. Start after His last start against Tampa Bay uh, on Tuesday, five innings, three walks, three strikeouts, one earned run, 21 fantasy points. Those are not enough fantasy points. This is a pitcher's park, though, so you could get a little crazy, throw in Hendricks a little bit. Then you got Blake Snell. You never know which Blake Snell you're going to get. The, the crazy thing is he is the highest-priced pitcher on FanDuel uh, for this slate at 9,500. Snell has a 1-6 record, 4.5 ERA, but he has 61 strikeouts going up against the Cubs. Against the Cubs in his career, 56 plate appearances, 23.2K percentage, 240 batting average. Don't mind that. Here's his breakdown. He hasn't. He faced the Cubs back on April 25th. Five innings, four hits, five walks, five strikeouts, two earned runs, and only 24 fantasy points there. Trying to see if he faced the Cubs other than that. That's the thing. No. 
He gets some strikeouts, but he also gives up walks. And he's very up and down here. If you want a late night anchor um, at pitching, I don't mind Blake Snell a little bit, but don't be surprised if he gives up like four or five walks, strikes out five or six, and doesn't get enough fantasy points for his price. This might this this just feels and shapes up like it's going to be a weird day on uh, just overall uh, over unders. Um, the pitch the pitching's atrocious. I haven't looked on Tuesdays, but I, there's no way the pitching on Tuesday is worse. It's got to be better. We it's we've got to get through it. We've got to get better. Um, there's just no way. As of now, I don't see any weather concerns. That could change, obviously. And if we do have some weather concerns, then we're in trouble because the slate would be even worse. So my suggestion, take a little break today. If not, good luck to everybody. I will be playing a little bit. I will be here, hopefully answer your questions all day. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly... Uh, just big shout out to everybody, all of you that have subscribed and everything. The past month and a half has been a whirlwind. We've had more views. We've had more content. We've had more engagement from you guys than in the last five years combined, probably, which says a lot. I know there are a lot of DFS providers out there. They don't do the breakdown like we do. They give you like four core players and that's it. And I'm trying to make you better DFS players and it sounds like some of you have been which has been awesome so I've seen all of your guys' content I've seen all of your guys' comments saying you've helped me out a lot I mean one person won $50,000 which is the most we've had we did have a subscriber back in like 2016 2017 win 20,000 or 18,000 and I thought that was a lot so 50,000 is amazing um, big shout out to you that's unbelievable uh, if you don't believe me, go check out the couple of videos and check out the uh, uh, the comments from him. And if you would uh, allow me, I kind of want to do like a winner's gallery on the website. So if anyone uses our advice, uses our content, uses anything on the website and you win big, would love to see winner's circle there. Um, and what I'd like to do is do a winner's circle. And anyone who wins that and... Uh, I have some ideas like if you use our avatar on FanDuel or DraftKings or whatever and you place in a tournament very high, you get we'll give you some uh, free access to the website, stuff like that. So that's kind of my thought, um, but just amazing. Congratulations. But we, just we have so much to offer here. So go to FantasyTeamAdvisors.com. Check all of this out. Go to FTA Plus. $10 a month right now is nothing, um, and you get a ton of information. With our lineups, I kind of want to just – we have a cheat sheet. I'll just go over the cheat sheet real quick for anyone who doesn't know. So what we do is – and this is obviously yesterday's content. We have a cheat sheet, cash pitchers, GPP pitchers, stacks, players we like in the stack. Okay, that's one. Then we have core lineup plays. So we have cat, FanDuel cash and GPP. We have DraftKings cash and GPP. And then you look at it, we give you the core plays we like or a little bit more. Um, to help you build out your lineups. So, like I say, don't use these 100%. Get a little bit creative with your stuff. That's why you're here. You're trying to build a better DFS player for yourself. That helps out. And then we even have boomstick shots or home run picks. Kind of what I do here. Um, but finally, you can see I'm coming back. Schwarber had that Schwarber bomb. So, let's bring me back closer. So, these are kind of awesome for you. Um, with MLB, we've got prop bets. So this is a con this is the thirty nine ninety nine package. It's DFS plus prop bets here. So you can see um, anyone in order. Our projections, FanDuel or DraftKings, the projection on there for a hit. These are hits, and then the difference, the value, and what bet you should take. Um, all the way down, we also have pitching props. So you can see with pitching, the pitcher the projected strikeouts, the numbers on FanDuel or DraftKings, and what you can check out there and what might be the best bets. Um, if anyone doesn't have a sports book, a FanDuel or DraftKings sports book um, account yet, and you sign up using our link and you deposit money and you show proof that you use our link, you're going to get the whole MLB season for free. So anyone who doesn't have a FanDuel or DraftKings sports book account, let us know. Use these links. You just come up here and hit sign up here and sign up here 
If you use that and you sign up using our code, we will give you free access to the website for the MLB season. So that being said, a lot of free content, a lot, a lot of paid content. And I saw some of your comments. You guys are interested in season long NFL or season long uh, fantasy baseball, like waiver wire pickups, um, bullpen, stuff like that. Just a lot of information. Would love to bring that to you if there's enough interest. So good luck on this slate. Have a fantastic Monday. Let's get this Monday started off right. Come back, share these videos, give the love, receive the love. Good luck to everyone. Let's bring them some bacon. Peace.